So ustekinumab has been a very uh, interesting and valuable addition to our treatment armamentarium for both ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease. Uh, we uh, first had approval for that for Crohn's disease about uh, three years ago now in 2016 and have found it to be useful both in patients that have not previously had biologic therapy, but especially in patients who have previously received biologic therapy and failed biologic therapy. Then recently, uh, ustekinumab was approved for the use of moderate severe ulcerative colitis as well. Again, it was a mixed population of patients who were naive to biologic therapy and patients who had previously failed biologic therapy. You could see significant results in each of those uh, treatment groups and it showed both induction and maintenance of remission and uh, steroid sparing, so it's a nice uh, robust effect. I think once again, the uh, the benefit in the anti-TNF failure patients is particularly important because if you look at some of the other drugs, switching from one anti-TNF to another in the face of failure doesn't work very well. The data with vetalizumab was less robust in the anti-TNF failure patients. We did see an effect with tofacitinib in patients uh, who had failed anti-TNF drugs, but that drug has recently uh, had some restrictions around dosing uh, and use because of side effects, including uh, deep venous thrombosis and pulmonary embolus. So the, the fact that ustekinumab also works well in that anti-TNF failure population really is an important advance, I think, for practitioners and for patients. So if you go back in time, there was a point in time in Crohn's disease where we looked only at symptoms for deciding whether a drug was effective or not. We have for many years looked at symptoms plus endoscopy findings for ulcerative colitis, but it's only been recently that we've begun to also study the effects of uh, various therapies on the histology of ulcerative colitis. And in fact, uh, ustekinumab is the first clinical trial program in ulcerative colitis to go through phase three with uh, biopsy outcome measures in all of the uh, randomized patients. So what you see in terms of the indications in treatment uh, is that you can see improvement of the uh, endoscopy findings, you can see histologic uh, remission, as well as uh, remission of clinical symptoms like rectal bleeding and diarrhea. And there was a particularly robust uh, outcome measure called histoendoscopic healing, where you saw both um, histologic remission and improvement in the endoscopy findings in the same patients. And we could see a benefit of that during maintenance therapy uh, with ustekinumab in patients with moderate to severe ulcerative colitis. We're still, um, studying in the larger picture uh, what that means, but I, I think what we believe it means is that it's a deeper level of remission. There are some observational studies already that suggest that if you get not only to endoscopic remission, but to histologic remission, and what that really means is that you've gotten rid of most or all of the neutrophils in the mucosa, that those patients will have much lower relapse rates over time and there are a number of additional observational studies and even some prospective interventional studies now looking at adjusting therapy in a treatment algorithm to treat patients all the way to histologic healing with the goal of improving their subsequent um, uh, outcomes and preventing uh, relapse. So stay tuned for that. I think it's gonna be a work in progress over the uh, next few years, but uh, the clinical trials with ustekinumab unequivocally show that you can achieve that outcome measure and now we need to see just how much better those patients who get that outcome measure do.